that shot. Look at you, pressing all the ladies. Whatever. Why would I waste a second on her when I got you standing right here in front of me? <gasps> yes! Why are her eyes always closed? Am I that ugly? Damn, her eyes open, but she look crazy as hell. Whoa, 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 whoa. So the original film that this film is based on was What Women Want. It came out in 2000, stars Mel Gibson and Helen Hunt. And it was a fantastic film. I remember it vaguely when I was in high school. I really did enjoy it. Now, this loosely based remake, What Men Want with Taraji G.P. Henson. I can't necessarily say that I was anticipating it. I was a little worried walking into it. But how did it turn out? Let's find out. My name is Brendan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. Hey, what's going on, guys? Thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for what men want. I really do appreciate it. Now, I'm a big fan of Miss Taraji P. Henson. I think she's a fantastic actress. Uh, she did a great job in Hidden Figures. She did a great job in Baby Boy and all of the past films that she's been in. She's, for the most part, did a great job. But as of late, 2018, uh, Taraji P. Henson, my sister, I love you. But you had two of the worst films, two of the worst films that came out last year with Acrimony, which was the worst film of all uh, last year. I did not see the uh, the uh, John C. Riley and Will Ferrell movie. People told me that was even worse. And then Proud Mary. I, I, I just thought that was garbage. She turned into Neil at the end. So I was worried about this one right here, What Men Want. Now, uh, the producer of it is Will Packard or William Packard. He has produced a ton of films that have to do with black people uh, like Think Like a Man, Ride Along, Obsessed with two, in 2009 with Beyonce. I love that film. You know, we got a director in here, Adam Shankman. I've never heard of him before, but he is at the helm of this. I just thought it was kind of interesting behind the scenes that what men want with a uh, lead female actress is in the titular role. Uh, you know, it's being directed by a male, but what women want in 2000 that had the male in their shoes it was directed by nancy myers so i just kind of like how they uh switched that up right there but you know is it you know it, it is what men want with taraji is it a stinker like proud mary is it a stinker like acrimony last year the answer to that question guys is absolutely no this film is fantastic i am not gonna waste your time please as soon as you're done watching this video go ahead schedule some time by yourself get your girl get your dude get whatever your family some friends y'all go see this movie because i i absolutely loved it and uh, we're going to talk about why now when they first started out it kind of reminded me of uh two can play that game uh, with Vivica Fox that came out like late 90s, early 2000s. That's just kind of the vibe I got where you have a strong black woman. She is contr she's in control of her own. She's in control of her destiny. She knows what she's want. She's goal oriented. She's strong. She's not no pushover, nothing like that. So, you know, I'm, I'm liking that. And then like the next thing that I noticed about this film was the soundtrack. The soundtrack was fire. It did not have a bunch of songs that we hear today on the radio. This was like mid, uh, uh, mid to late 90s. I mean, we had some TLC we had some Beyonce of course Beyonce is still prominent now but I'm talking about like can you pay my bills you know type songs now that, that they may sound silly that song that concept or whatever but now we had Beyonce we had some TLC we had another of uh, a number of great artists from like the mid to late 90s early 2000s and I, w I was you know we had some Jill Scott in there too I was bobbing my head you know throughout the most you know uh, majority of this movie just off the soundtrack and that's just kind of something you know that I, I was not expecting now of course this is a romantic comedy and while i do like my romantic comedy sometimes i can roll my eyes at them uh second act kind of had a you know a little uh flavor in there of that but i end up really enjoying that film and i did here and one thing is because the the love story i guess you can say was not the main focal point of this movie it, the, it was the subplot and uh kind of took the back seat for majority of the movie except when it was absolutely necessary and when it was necessary it hit home very 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 hard 98% of the time and we're going to talk about that 2% uh, later on in this video the next thing that I really did lo love about this movie was it had a ton of family values but not just from the main characters from all the characters within the movie from uh, Taraji P. Henson, well I don't want to call it Taraji P. Her, her name is Allie Davis uh, she was a great character um, what do I want to talk about well, no we're talking about the family I'm talking about um, so <laughs> 
at her friends, uh, you know, they, they wasn't her family. That was her friends. But, you know, her friends did feel like a family. Uh, Allie in this film, she had a great relationship with her father. And it wasn't just like a little snippet, you know, great relationship, you know. And, okay, she has a great dad. She has a great relationship. And it doesn't come back around. No, it comes back full circle a few times. And actually, uh, all those elements help push the story forward, you know, and add a little heart to it. Her, Sorry about that, hitting the mic. Um, her father is uh, Richard Roundtree, the original Shaft. You know, he was just in the, the latest Shaft trailer with Samuel Jackson as well. Great actor, great male, great strong presence in this movie I, I i was really smiling when i was like you know feeling all the family uh, values and dynamics in this film so you have that with ali and her father um you also have that with a couple of other characters as well uh what is the gentleman's name i should have looked it up but i did not think that i was going to be talking about him but uh i, I have to uh, i have to give him credit where uh credit is due just real quick, guys. I'm so sorry, but that's okay. His name is uh, Aldis Aldis Hodge. He plays the character of Will, no last name. You know him and his little son in this movie as well. You you seen the trailer? Um, you know where uh, she's talking about uh, the little boy comes in there and he has uh, Taraji's panties on uh, on, he on his head. He's like, "Welcome to Wakanda," and he's like, "Don't breathe." That's that's Will. You know he has a, a strong family presence as well, and just every everybody around like Tracy Morgan is in this film as well he he's really he says it like you know family is just really important to me and if you're just not you know have family values i really don't want to have anything to do with you but like what is this movie about besides what do men want ali davis taraji p henson she is a sports agent for an agency a firm that is run predominantly by males and she's at the top of her game she has a um a, a nice little assistant uh, by the name of Brandon, who is gay in the film. And the reason why I brought it up is because they bring it up a lot in the film. And there is a number of gay jokes and they, they are funny or whatever. So, you know, I mean, if you are gay, if you're a homosexual, there's some stuff in here for you, too. Just not a heterosexual relationship. I'm just saying. I mean, you know, uh, this film did a great job all across the board. But uh, Allie is an agent and she's trying to score the latest uh, like first or second round draft pick named Jamal. And, you know, he's like 18, 19 years old. Tracy Morgan is the father or whatever. So he's like, OK, I'm, we're not going to F with you if you don't give a crap about family. You know what I'm saying? So it's like family stuff like all over the place. Um, another thing that I loved about this movie. Oh, well, uh, another thing I, yeah, I loved about this movie is just Allie Davis herself. I, I said in the beginning that it reminded me of Vivica A. Fox and who can play the game. She's just a great character. She's funny that acting in this film uh came through uh top notch and i'll talk about that in just a second another great thing i liked about this movie is i really just had no idea how this film would end and i think that goes to just the writing i would list all the writers but i was looking at it's like eight writers that's like a lot um you know but that's fine but um i think it you know I didn't know how it was going to end was because they did not put the the um, the love story, the romantic comedy in the forefront. They, that was kind of a subplot because it could have been predictable. But again, that kind of falls into that 2% I was complaining about. We're going to talk about um, in a second. But uh, I had no idea how this was going to end. If I can predict how the movie is going to end or how it's going to go in the first 20, 30 minutes, you know, I, I, I'm clocked out. I haven't seen every movie, but I've seen a lot of movies. And sometimes I do get a little annoyed uh, with the three act structure of how we have. Have, uh, here in the states now another good thing is that, that this film is rated r and there are you know I'll, I'll be honest with you you know i don't like that you know my black sisters out there whether you uh yellow bone light skin albino dark chocolate whatever i love all y'all i mean i love all women of course but i especially love my black women and when it comes to films I, i'm a little leery about you know them being over sexualized in the movies and you know just you know ds and hoes and stuff like that you know it, I, there's reasons why i kind uh, he had some feelings about girls tripping, you know, but that's a different uh, you can go check out my review for that. But um, it, it, there's nothing to worry about in here. Of course, there was sex in the movie. This is rated R, but it wasn't over the top. Um, it was honest. It was real because women like having sex just like men do. I mean, you're a human being. You're supposed to. If you if you don't like having sex, I don't want to necessarily say there's anything wrong with you. I mean, that's fine. But I mean, you know, that may be a conscious decision in your life. But I like the way it was handled in this film. It was not over the top. It was not raunchy. It was realistic to me. It was funny. I like the way that Taraji put, you know, her female 
uh emotions you know at the forefront and you know sometimes she do you know she like to get it in every woman out there like i'm gonna wait till i get married i mean i i encourage that and i think that you know everybody should do that man and woman but at the same time that's just not realistic and i really do like how uh the film handled that and with this film being rated r it was a necessary r because sometimes people or studios can just uh, stamp a uh, uh mpa well then the studios don't make the decision the mpaa does but at the same time you know the studio does control okay do we want this pg-13 rated r you know they have to make certain decisions but this film right here it was a necessary rated r because the whole plot of the film is what men want and or, or even what women want and i don't even know if that film was rated r as well let me just look real quick but uh what women want with mel gibson so what men want, what we're talking about now, was rated R. Oh, what women want was PG-13. I, I, I did not realize that. And that film came out in um, uh, two hours and seven minutes. And I brought it up for a reason. I'm going to say in a second. But this film, what men want with Ali, with Taraji, it was a necessary R because I, I'm pretty sure, you know, women do have their raunches, um, um, you know, conversations to themselves in their head and amongst themselves. But of course, men do too. And we, I mean, y'all already know this, but if a chick walks by and, you know, she is fine as hell, you know, we going to think something in my mind, not just something crazy like, oh, I just want to fuck that. Blah, blah. I mean, okay, that's a little bit too much. But I mean, you know, we're human as well. And so when we have a character that is able to read minds or whatever, you know, you, it's for the film to be good, you have to be a realistic of what men are thinking all the time, not just about women, but just in general, just in life, just like, just like, oh, I, I just charted or I, that that's gross. But or, um, oh, I didn't brush my, well, I'm, I'm not giving the best examples right now, but I think you get my point. And when the men, because she can read what men's thoughts, and I like the way, um, I, I like the way they put that, uh, they, I, I like the way that was developed in the film. It, it was, uh, well, I don't want to say it was creative, but I, I, I liked it. But that was very realistic. The R rating was necessary with the, the, the brief sex scenes and also just the way that uh, men think and the way she's hearing her thoughts and things like that and one of the things i said that i really liked about the film was taraji's acting when she realized that she was able to hear men's thoughts it was hilarious i was laughing my ass off i would be reacting the same way like whoa i know i said that i want to know what women want but this is just too much you know like i, I would have wished that you know this woman would have cleaned herself this morning but i just didn't hear that and i had a crush on her but i don't know now like ah and the way that she it was funny i was laughing i was one of the i was one of the loudest people in the theaters laughing and and that's not normal i mean I, i'm a goofball i'm silly and i like to laugh but i was it was one scene in particular, y'all. I was, man, I was damn near on the floor. It was so damn funny to me. Like, seriously, at this particular time, I, I seriously was a laugh. I was laughing all the way into the next scene. And people were started laughing. Like, when, the, when everybody else calmed down laughing, because they were laughing at this particular joke as well. And I really don't want to ruin it for you because it kind of came out of nowhere. You know, you kind of like, okay, I feel like something crazy about to happen. And then it happened. And then I, I was damn near in tears. When everybody else stopped laughing or whatever, I was still laughing. They started laughing and me laughing because I was laughing so hard. It was it was just that funny. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and tell you what it is in the spoiler uh, end of this video. It's gonna be after the credits. So after the hear hear out the music and the thumbnails and pop up, I'm gonna drop that spoiler at the end. Uh, so yeah, the mo the movie is funny as hell. I lo I loved every character in this movie. There was not one single character in this movie that I did not like. Even the bad guys or the people that you don't like that you're not supposed to like. I still like them. Just because of their presence and the dilemmas that they cause and the obstacles that Taraji and Ali had to overcome in this film. That's great too. The person that stole the hold on, acting. Wait, wait, acting when she got okay, y'all talked about that. Sorry about that. Person that stole the show, Erica Badu. My goodness gracious. She was funny too. When the film ended, I was like, I, I got up like this, and I was like, oh, wait, wait, this is a romantic comedy. This is a comedy. We're supposed to get some outtakes. And then there was no outtakes at first. I'm like, wait, well, what are outtakes? This don't even feel right. You know what I'm saying? And everybody else was sitting down too, but we had some outtakes with Erica Badu at the end. But when she was just in the movie, she was just so random with it. You know what I'm saying? Great, great actor, great, excuse me, actress. She, she was funny. I liked it. Um, all of Taraji's friends were funny in these scenes. I mean, she kind of had to do with uh, how she got these these abilities to, uh, you know, hear, hear what men want. But it, like, it was funny as hell um let's see um y'all talked about taraji being honest tracy morgan i also um you know this also had to do you know had to do with some stereotypes like with 
what certain like white people assume that black people like. And I'm not talking about all white people, just some. I mean, we don't like a bunch of just. Well, I, I don't want to ruin it for you, but I, I like the way that they addressed it in the film. It, it was very nice. But guys, this film is freaking hilarious. Now, this is not it's not perfect movie. I'm going to talk about a couple of dislikes that I, I don't like that I don't like about the film. First thing, it came in at uh, an hour, not an hour, well, 117 minutes. What was it hour and 57 minutes? I did feel it was a little too long. Uh, at one point, it, it, it was just so great and it was getting good, but I don't want to necessarily say I was bored, but I kind of felt the length. OK, and that kind of just kind of goes to like the flow of the film, the pacing of the film. So it could have been a little off a little bit in the second act or whatever. Uh, they could have kind of trimmed the fat, you know, but at the same time. I feel that everything that they put on screen was necessary. So I don't know how they will handle it. I mean, I've never shot, directed, written, or produced a film before. So what do I know? You know, I'm just a, a guy that likes movies. You know what I'm saying? That's giving you my opinion. But uh, I didn't, I really didn't care for that. Um, also, uh, what I was really loving about, the, sorry, hitting the table. What I was really liking about the film, like I said before, is I did not know how it would end. And I talked about how in America we have a three act structure. The reason why I said it is because, I don't I don't watch as enough I don't watch as much as I used to but I used to watch a lot of foreign films as well South America you know especially a bunch of Asian films as well and they do not always follow the three act structure you can just get a whole different sense of culture and how a movie was made but here one of the things that I did not like is every especially there's always a third act fallout but you know right as the second act is transitioning to the third act especially in romantic comedies i trusted you and this was fake the whole time oh no you don't understand i don't want to talk to you anymore and they run off and then at the third act they come and make up you know it, it, you have it every time and it was in this film as well and i was kind of like oh man i didn't even think we was gonna get this but here here it is blah 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 the second and third act fallout i've seen this a million times so I, you know, I, I was a little over it, but uh, the way they tied it up kind of made up for it. It was a little rushed, but at the same time, with the length of the film uh, being what it was, there was a lot of loose ends in this film that they had to tie up. And I liked the way they tied all of them up. It was a little lengthy. I was kind of having a Lord of the Rings, Return of the King vibe thing going on. If you've seen that film, that trilogy, you know, the Lord of the Rings Part 3, the original, you know, Part 3, they had like 17 endings. It's like, goddamn. I mean, I like what I'm seeing, but is the movie going to end or not? So, that, you know, that's something my little gripes there. And then I kind of at the very very end like taraji made like a little decision uh when you know towards the end of the, her character at, at least and i kind of rolled my eyes like oh lord you know what i'm saying but um you know this isn't necessarily still a, like a typical uh film of where, where you have a bunch of male chauvinists i mean you have that in the film but it, it was checked it was acknowledged it was put in this place and i like the way they handled that so i gotta give it to all the writers i gotta give it to will packer taraji the whole cast the producers uh, the soundtrack that was, uh, I don't even say his name, his name is Brian Tyler. This film is amazing, guys. Now, I'm not finna say that this film is the top 10 best comedies of all time. You know, I still think that like Bridesmaids and The uh, Hangover, the first one, and you know, I can go down the list, are, are funnier than this film, but it is hilarious as hell. Uh, I went in not knowing anything. Like, I was expecting those to be funny. Um, I didn't go into this film just I mean, I was worried but my man expectations were mediocre so of course your expectations has to do with how you finally feel about the film but I really did enjoy it overall guys uh, I would not mind seeing it again I may even buy it I, I'm not gonna say that but you know it, it, it's damn good it, it's something where you know months six months from now a year from now if it's on tv or streaming or something or tv I don't even watch tv like that no more I don't, I don't know if anybody does anyway I was going to say back in the day, like if you just flipping through channels and this pops up on TV, you know, would you watch it? You know, just, and I, I would. And uh, it's just a great film. If I had to rate uh, what man want out of a nine out of I mean, out of a, a one out of ten, I gave it away. I would easily give this a nine out of ten. Yes, a nine out of ten. But guys, that is just my opinion for what men want. What did you think? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did I turn you on? Did I turn you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know down in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. If you don't, that's fine. But you can still subscribe to my channel. You can also look me up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter.
Twitter, all that good stuff. It's right there at the bottom of your screen, and I made it very easy by providing a link to all that good stuff down in the description box below. But guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review of what men want starting Tarashi P. Henson. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brendan Keith Avery. I'm dropping a spoiler after the credits, and that's just my opinion. Peace. Alright, so this is a spoiler part just real quick. If you're watching this and you have not seen the movie, I strongly suggest you turn it off now. Go see the movie and come back and watch this part. So, you have been warned. But man, when Taraji was in her apartment building and she saw the white dude that was swole, working out or whatever, you know, they was having those exchanges and stuff like that. When she was reading his mind and when she said, when uh, he was like, man, I just wish he would push me against the, the uh, door right here and start kissing me. And they went to the apartment or whatever. And she went upstairs and he was all locked up in the uh, S&M or whatever. Effing hilarious. That was the part of this film where I was just like on the floor. And my film is going off right now. Sorry about that. But th that was just hilarious to me. That was the funniest part in the entire movie to me where I was just laughing. So everybody started laughing at me laughing. I, I was just dying laughing. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the movie and I'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>